Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter two. Uh, look at verse number 11. Second Corinthians chapter two. Verse number 11 says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Amen. We're talking from the subject matter of beware of the lies of Satan. Beware of the lies of Satan. Amen. Ignorance can kill. <laughs> Amen. Ignorance can kill. The Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And it's not that knowledge isn't available to us, it's that we reject the knowledge, the Bible says. And so I, I am endeavoring in this series to, to teach us what are some of the lies the devil is trying to hoodwink the church with, amen? What he's trying to masquerade as the truth when truly it is a lie. And so the first thing we found out was that he wants to, us to think that he doesn't exist, that he's just a figmentation of our imagination. That he's some cartoon character that doesn't exist, but he really does. Because the Bible gives different aliases of our adversary, amen? He's called the devil, amen? He's called our adversary. He's called a thief, amen? A robber and a stealer, amen? And he's called the tempter of the brethren, amen? And so we found out in previous lessons that he does exist. And then we found out that there is a place called hell, and it is real. <laughs> Amen. It is real, and those who don't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will spend eternity there. Amen. There's not a shadow of a doubt that hell does exist. And so then we found out that the, the devil is trying, especially now in, in our society, how the devil is trying to make uh, homosexuality natural. Amen. And, uh, and it's not natural. Amen. God said from the very beginning that he made male and female. Praise God. And, and so, so we found out when we went thoroughly through the word of God to see what God had to say about homosexuality. Now, as always, I, I want to tell people that, listen, God loves you no matter what condition you're in. But once you come to him, you have to change. Amen. And then we talked on, on the last couple of weeks about how uh, sickness and disease is not from God. Amen. The devil wants to impose sickness and disease on us. But God says we have a right. We have a covenant right to be healed. That's part of our package that we have when we get saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, now, the reason why the devil wants us to accept sickness and disease is so that we can have an untimely death. Look, I believe that God wants us to live a long time here on this earth. Amen. And I plan on being here 120 years. I don't know how long you want to stay, but I'm going to be 120 years. And I'm going to be cool at 120. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But, but not only that, but he wants to affect our lives. Watch this now. So that, that, that we'll be limited by disease. Amen. See, if you allow sickness and disease to get into your body, you're going to be limited in what you can do for the kingdom. And so, so he wants us to believe that you got to die of something. Amen. No, no, I found out that the Lord just took Enoch. Amen. And so if the Lord took Enoch, he is no respect of person. Lord, just take me. No, I got to stay 122 because that I got a young woman. I, I can't leave her, June. I can't leave her. Praise the Lord. Somebody come snatch her up. Praise the Lord. Amen. But 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 if we accept sickness and disease, watch this now, we will forfeit the right of, of what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. Jesus came and he died on the cross to give us that benefit. And if we don't accept the healing that he, that he has already provided for us, we will forfeit that. Amen. Amen. And then finally, we will we will suffer unnecessarily and blame God for it. Amen. Amen. And that is not the will of God. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you let me give you these seven things, these eight things rather on how you can pray for your healing. OK, number one, here's how you pray for your healing. Find the scripture, amen, that tells you of the will of God for your life when it comes to healing. Amen. The Bible says that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So once you find the scripture, amen, that promises you your healing, then you will get it in your spirit, man, and it will become a part of your life. Now, what I suggest you do is go to the bookstore and get one of the series on healing. Praise the Lord, because I, you know, I walk through the scripture and I give you scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture to give you an indication of what God wants for your body. OK, number two, ask the father in Jesus name. Watch this now and believe that it, it is done now, not in the sweet by and by, but that is done right now. Amen. 
The Bible says you ask the Father in Jesus' name, and he's going to do it for you. Amen? And then the Bible says about right now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen right now. Amen? So I ask the Father in Jesus' name and believe that my healing is done right now. Amen? Thirdly, keep your thoughts in agreement with the word of God. Amen? In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, it talks about pulling down the strongholds. Everything that goes contrary to the word of God, amen? I cannot deny the devil from sending me a thought to my head, but I can deny him the power to make a nest in my hair. Amen? Listen, so, so look, I pull every, every negative thought down. I, I don't let it sit there. He's going to shoot a thought to my mind, but look, I'm going to pull it down. If it, don't, if it don't line up with God's word, I pull it down. Number four, avoid discussions with people who don't agree with you. Amen. See, you got to have the, the Jesus mentality when he came to Jairus and his daughter. You remember how when Jesus went to Jairus' house, you know, Jairus said, Jesus, if you come to my house, lay your hands on my daughter, she shall be healed. But by the time he got there, she had died. So when Jesus arrived at Jairus' house, watch this now, they were all crying and wailing and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Jesus says, the girl's not dead, she just sleep. And they start laughing at Jesus. Like, this man don't understand. That girl is dead. Jesus says she ain't dead, she sleep. And Jesus had to put them out. See, there's some people that you, look, ain't no sense in having this discussion with you. I just got to put you out. Because right now, look, I am the heel resisting sickness and disease. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Number five. Number, number five. You have to thank God for his goodness and that you're healed right now. So so when I'm praying for my healing, I begin to thank God. Father, I thank you that I'm healed in Jesus name. Amen. I'm healed now. Amen. So you got to start thanking God in advance. I know your body still might be aching, but God, I thank you. I'm healed. I know that that, that devil tried to send a headache to you, a migraine to your head. But Father, I thank you. I'm healed. Amen. So, so look, so I got to thank God in advance. And, and see, most people want to wait until the manifestation of a thing. God said, no, 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 no. See, if you believe that you receive it, you already got it. So thank me for it. Woo, Jesus. Amen. Number six, continue with your faith confession. Amen. Continue with your faith confession. Don't let your mouth talk you out of the blessings of God. Don't let your mouth talk your body out of its healing. Amen. Amen. So I got to maintain my faith confession. Praise the Lord. Number one. Number seven. Don't get into fear and start panicking. The Bible says that God did not give us the, the spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. So don't let the devil intimidate you and get you into fear. Like when the doctor gives you a bad report. Look, look, most people die because of fear. Amen. The doctor gives them a bad report and fear jumps in there. And, and look, you have taken the word of the doctor over what God has said. And the Bible says, who's going to believe my report? God said. Amen. So I got the doctor's report and then I got God's report. Well, whose report you going to believe? Hmm. Number next, last thing. Don't let anyone talk you out of your faith. Y'all remember blind Bartimaeus? Blind Bartimaeus hears that Jesus was in town and uh, he begins to cry out. Amen. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the folk that were around Jesus said, be quiet. In essence, they told the boy to shut up. But look, he did not allow anybody to talk him out of his faith. He said, Jesus, the son of thou son of David, have mercy on me. And, and the, good, the interesting thing about this story is that the people that told him to be quiet was the same people that told him, he calleth you. The master calleth you. You see how people are fickle? Amen. One day they're with you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, so watch this now. So you don't let anybody talk you out of your faith. Don't let anybody talk you out of your faith. You know what the word says? You stand on the word. And look, that is why, oh, watch this now. That is why it, for married folk, that's why it's so important that y'all stand in agreement with each other. Amen? Because then it doesn't matter what other people have to say. 
Because the Bible says that where two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing upon the same thing, whatever they ask of me, I'm going to do it. So now we're in agreement. So it doesn't matter what any outside source have to say. Amen. So, so you could just, oh my God, if I, if I, I just tell y'all some stories about what people said that we couldn't do or what we can't do and all this kind of stuff. Look, I, I'm not moved by what you say. I'm only moved by what I believe. Amen. And I believe the word of God. And if the word of God can say it, I'm not going to I'm going to I'm not going to let you talk me out of it. Amen. 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 So there's a quick review. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now go to Joshua chapter number one. Joshua chapter number one. The next slide that the enemy is trying to tell us is that God doesn't want you to prosper. He might want somebody else to prosper, but he doesn't want you to prosper. <laughs> amen. 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 And so, so the devil tries to intimidate folk, especially ministers who preach this prosperity message, amen, because many people misinterpret what I'm saying, because they only think I'm talking about money, but I'm talking about prosperity in every aspect of your life, amen. I'm talking about the spiritual prosperity, amen. I'm talking about your emotional prosperity. I'm talking about your physical prosperity. And I'm also talking about your material prosperity. Amen. God wants every piece of the pie of your life to prosper. Who praise the Lord. How many of you ever cut a pie? Amen. You cut a pie. And look, if you take a piece out, it's not a whole pie. Well, well see, God wants you whole and complete. Lacking nothing. Not missing anything. Amen. And so, but we got to understand that the enemy is trying to convince believers. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about believers that God doesn't want you to prosper because after all, you're not even educated. God don't talk about whether you have a PhD, whether you're going to prosper or not. Who Jesus. Amen. Joshua chapter one. Uh-huh. I see. I'm going to have to work with this because see y'all, some of y'all have a mental shutdown already. Uh-huh. Joshua chapter one, verse number eight. Joshua 1, verse number 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou shalt have what? Good success. Amen, amen, amen. See, that, look, part of the strategy of the devil is to get believers to have mental shutdown when it comes down to prosperity. Amen. Because, look, if we're not careful, it will limit us <laughs> on what we're able to believe that we receive from God. Amen. Amen. See, see, God says in his word that, look, he wants all of all mankind to be saved. He's not willing that any should perish, the Bible says, but that all come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Well, see, if I don't understand that God wants me saved and wants me to prosper, prosper in my spiritual walk, Watch this now. I will miss out on the invitation when it comes. Amen. And that's why, you know, the devil say, look, when the invitation comes, why don't you leave? Why don't you put your finger up and walk out? Why? Because he don't want you to prosper spiritually. He doesn't want you to connect with your father. Amen. 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 And then then go to uh, John chapter 14. When it comes down to my emotional state. Watch this now. If I'm not careful, the enemy will tell me that, listen, God doesn't want you to prosper with peace. And it's peace that he left us. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Woo, Jesus. John chapter 14. Look at verse number 27. John chapter 14, verse number 27. You there? Look what he says. Peace, I leave you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So God said, look, my peace I left you, my peace I gave to you. And if we're not careful, the devil will say, look, that peace is not for you. What will what, what, what happen is the devil will keep you up all night long. Amen. Stressed out about your situation. And God says to cast all your care on him, for he cares for you. See, because if I cast my care on God, I can have the peace. Ooh, Jesus, amen. Look, look, go, okay, go to uh, John 16. John chapter 16. Look at verse number 33. 
John 16, verse number 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now, I like how the Amplifier puts this. Watch this now. I tell you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. Be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of the power to harm you and conquered it just for you. Glory to God. Amen. Then I found in Isaiah 26 and verse 3, it says, if I keep my mind on him, I'll have perfect peace. So what the devil tries to do is, watch this now, is tell you that God doesn't want you to prosper in your emotions. And I have found, watch this now, that I get to set my own emotions. The Bible says, set your affections on things above. Amen. So I get to set my affections. Amen. I get to set my emotional state. That's why I'm so happy all the time. Amen. That's why you see me smiling all, all the time. Now, do I have trials? Do I have tribulation? Absolutely. But I have learned. I don't let that stuff bother me. Amen. I don't let it bother me. Look, I have perfect peace because my mind is stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, look, that's why. Look, I laugh at my enemy when he comes at me. He said, when, trial, look, when, when the trials come, he said, laugh at him. <laughs> Praise the Lord, amen. Nobody happy, nobody happy but me. That's okay, okay, okay. When it comes down to my physical health, amen, my physical prosperity, I have found out that by his stripes I am healed, amen. And then finally, I see that God wants me to prosper financially. Hallelujah. And here's why. Go to John chapter number 8. Here's why God wants us to prosper in every area of our lives. You want to know why? Because you are a direct representation of him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. When they see you, they ought to see God. John chapter number eight. Look at verse number 12. John chapter eight. Verse number 12. Watch this. Look what he says. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. So in other words, it says, you're going to be a reflection of me. I'm the light, but that light is going to shine through you. Yeah. Amen. So, so what the devil tried to do is keep you uh, missing your prosperity in every area so that you won't be a direct reflection of God. How, how, do, you, how do you think we're going to have, how do you think we're going to do the persons with purpose? Amen. If we're not demonstrating to God that, look, we received the prosperity that he promised us. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. If I allow the enemy to convince me that the prosperity in every area of my life, God doesn't want me to have it. Watch this now. I will not be able to provide for my family in all these areas. Watch this now. If you don't have peace, how are you going to pass that peace on to your children? Uh, uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, when we had our night of praise and thanksgiving, one of the members from uh, Believers New Life Ministry, uh, Brother Tim and his wife Keisha, have a daughter. And, uh, and that baby is so happy. Oh, she is so happy. She's a happy, happy, happy baby. Always smiling and boy, when she even gave me the sweet eyes, she said, Pastor John, she gave me sweet eyes. And so I, I said, I told Gwen, I say that baby's peace and that baby's joy is a direct reflection of what's happening in their house. Amen. 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 It exudes what's happening at home. Amen. And if I don't receive the prosperity in every area of my life, watch this now, it's going to it's going to show off in my in my family. First Timothy chapter five. First Timothy chapter five. Look at verse number eight. First Timothy chapter five, verse number eight. But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, 
He had denied the faith and is worse than in what? An infidel. So watch this now. Watch this now. So, so watch, if, if I am saved, because that's part of my prosperity, right? Then what happens is it oozes over to my family. Amen. That's why the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he won't depart from it. Watch this now. Now, they might act a fool. Amen. Yeah, yeah, they might act a fool. Because they, they want to, I want to experience it for myself. But watch this now. Because they see the salvation of the house, guess what? They're going to come back. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So now if I got peace in my house, it's going to exude to all, all of my house. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. And the, and, and the, and the last thing, the last thing that, that if we we're not careful on not receiving the prosperity message that God has for us. Watch this now. We will not be able to get folks saved. We will not be able to carry out the Great Commission. God wants us to go out into the highways and byways and compel men to come to him. But we cannot do it unless all of us participate in the plan. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you know that when one person who receives those persons with a purpose, watch this now, who see what God has done for them through others and gives their lives to God, guess what the Bible says? Heaven rejoices. Who Jesus. Now, if heaven can rejoice over one soul getting saved, what's wrong with us rejoicing when people get saved? Amen. But but watch this now. We cannot do it unless we all prosper in every aspect of our lives. Amen. So so why is it, Sister Gladys, that it's it's hard for people to, to accept and they struggle with accepting this message of prosperity? I tell you why. Because we have been socially conditioned. <laughs> to reject wealth, you know, because somebody told us growing up that money is the root of all evil. And it ain't, that ain't what the Bible says. The Bible says for the love of money. That's why we got to recondition our minds. That's why the Bible says renew your thinking. Renew your thinking. Amen. Because. If you reject the prosperity message, you respect the wholeness of God. Amen. God wants us blessed. I, I, man, I'm going, man, God wants you so blessed that you not only have enough for you, enough for the kingdom, but you also have enough to share with other folk. Amen. And still have some left. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Oh, Jesus. Amen. Uh, another reason why, another reason why. People uh, struggle with receiving the prosperity message. Watch this now. Because they, it's easy to make an excuse for lack. Amen. Than making a demand on your potential. In the next few weeks, and I don't know exactly, exactly when, but I'm going to show you your potential. You say, well, what, 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 what potential I have, Pastor? In each and every one of you, there is greatness on the inside. <laughs> right now, right now, not, not, see, see, not when I get to heaven. Right now, you have greatness on the inside of you. <laughs> and all I got, I got to show you that God wants you to do great things and because you are great people. And he's a great God. Amen. Amen. But see, but it's easy for me, it's easy for me to make an excuse for my lack. Well, you know, I grew up on the wrong side of town. You know, my pa look, my parents never had anything. You know, my daddy left me, you know, left the family. Well, you know, I, I, I didn't have, a, I don't have the education that others have. Well, well see, 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 if you begin to make all those excuses, uh, uh, excuses are just a veil attempt to lie. Because even if your daddy wasn't there. God says, I'll be a father to the fatherless. <laughs> Even if you don't have a degree from the college, all you really need is a BA, a born again degree. Amen. So, so, so that, you don't have an excuse to make when, it, when you can't. Look, look, because God said, look, 
whatever you put your hands to, it's going to be blessed. Amen? So, so look, I, it didn't say whether I had an education. It didn't say whether I grew up on the right side of the track or the right side of the freeway. If I got God on my side, I got greatness on the inside of me. Amen? And then, then another reason why another reason why people don't want to receive uh, all that God has for them is because they mock successful men of God who will preach this message without intimidation. Amen. <laughs> I, I have an opportunity to talk to some pastor, Sister Gladiator, and, and, and one, one pastor told me, say, Shaw, the only thing they can say about you and hate on you for is your stance on prosperity. And he say, he say, you teaching the word. It's not like what you teaching ain't in here. Amen. And it's not like you ain't taking a scripture, the scripture, the scripture, the scripture, the scripture, the scripture to show us. Amen. That this is what God desires for you. Hallelujah. Amen. But they are mocking, trying to discredit you. Amen. But they will be the same ones. Watch this now. When you prosper. Like God wants you to prosper in every area. They will be the people. The people that's hating on you will come to you and ask you for a piece of your something. Hey, can you give me some of that peace you have? Break me off a little bit. Some of that joy that you have, break me off a little laughter, amen. Some of that money you have, oh, break me off a hundred here and there. Amen. The same folk that, that want to put you down. But standing on the word of God will be the same ones. God will turn them around. It'll be a boomerang effect. Come back to you. Amen. <laughs> and then finally, finally, the reason why people are, are hesitant to receive and struggle with this prosperity message. Watch this now. Because we have been conditioned to be survivors. Watch this now. And not successful. You know, even a few years back. Oh, girl, oh, girl, son of the song, you just a survivor. And boy, everybody was rocking that song. And I'm listening to it. I'm like, listen to what the girl saying. You just a survivor. No, 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 no. See, see, because when I when I see what God says, I'm not just a survivor. A survivor is one that just barely gets by. And here's what God says about you. You should be the head and not the tail. You should be above only. And not be beneath. You're not just surviving. Amen. No, no, no. I'm going to have good success. Amen. Why? Because I'm not just a survivor. Survivors need a handout from somebody else. Survivors don't know who their source is and their source is God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's why we have to break the restraints of this world system. Amen. That's why we got to live by kingdom principles amen from our kingdom authority that we have amen we must we must get a godly perception a fresh godly perception on what he has to say god says look my word cannot return to me void it has to accomplish so i got to get a fresh godly perception how does god see me amen and then finally i gotta i gotta i gotta develop a god first mentality but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. I got to have a God first mentality. God, you're first. In everything. Amen. Now, now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 13. Hallelujah. Look at verse number one. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's see if I can wrap this up tonight. You ready? This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of what? Two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Okay? So out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I've already given you one scripture in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. That is God's intent for you to prosper. Amen? Go to, you, you remember 3 John? 3 John 2? Beloved, I wish above all things. That thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul what? Prosperous. That's two, right? Go to Psalms 1. Psalms 1. I want to debunk the devil's lie that God does not want you to prosper. Amen? Psalms 1, verse number 1. 
Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in a season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall what? Prosper. Amen. How many witnesses is that? That's three. Go to Psalms 23. Psalms 23. Look at verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? Won't. So, so if I have no want for anything, I'm prospering in life. He making me lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leading me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup, what? So if I'm running over, watch this, watch this now. I'm prospering, amen? And then he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Psalms 35. Psalms 35. Look at verse number 27. Psalms 35. Verse number 27. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So when the devil tells you that God doesn't want you to prosper, I'm giving you the solution from the word of God, that God truly wants you to prosper. Amen. Verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad. That favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his what? Of his service. So God takes pleasure in your prosperity. Psalms 84. Psalms 84. Verse number 11. Psalms 84. Verse number 11. Watch this now. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Glory to God. Amen. So God's not going to keep something back from me. Amen. He says no good thing will he withhold from me. So when folk try to tell you that God doesn't want you to have that. No, 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 baby. Hold up a second. God want me to have every good thing. Amen. Every good thing. <laughs> Amen. Psalms 118. Psalms 118. Psalms 118. Look at verse number 23. Psalms 118, verse number 23. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send when? Send now what? Not in the sweet by and by, Lord. Send it now. Look, look, look. You don't need this prosperity in the sweet by and by because you're going to be in the presence of God. You need it right now. You need your peace right now. You need your salvation right now. You need your healing right now. And you sure enough need your money right now. Amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus, amen. All right. Last scripture, last scripture, Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. Look at verse number 17. Isaiah 48. Verse number 17. Watch this now. Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord, thy God, which teacheth you to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. So God say, I'm going to teach you how to prosper. Amen. I'm going to teach you. See, and that's why the devil don't want you coming to a church like this. Amen. Why? Because you're going to be taught the word. He's going to get taught how to prosper. Amen. Man, you're going to be taught how to prosper in your marriage. Well, you got some peace in your house. Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, man, you're going to be taught how to prosper and profit in your health and your healing. You're going to get the little exercise that you need. You're going to start eating right. You're going to go to bed at night. 
Get you some rest, amen. You know, you know, look, you're gonna get eight hours. Get, get some sleep. Some of y'all be burning. You, you, you burning the midnight oil. No, no, see, I'm gonna teach you that that look, just like God said, look, I'm gonna give me some rest. You need to get you some rest. Ain't no sense of you stand up when he says, look, God of Israel, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. If he don't sleep, look, I, look, I go to sleep. Amen. Y'all come to our house. Look, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. You know, Keisha used to make a joke. She watching this tonight. She used to make a joke about us, you know, about me and her mama. About how we go to bed early. And so, so, so she called, she called recently and uh, she had us laughing. She said, uh, I guess I'm turning into mama. I say, baby, I, I say, I say, why you say that? She say, because I'm in the bed at 9, 930. <laughs> I say, see, all that stuff you were growing up, like, oh, y'all going to bed early. Huh? I say, now look at you, look at you now. But watch this now, she still look, look, she still look like she's 17. <laughs> Ain't no need of you stand up all night long. Amen. So, so you're going to be told how to go to bed. You're going to be told how to go take a vacation, get you some rest. Go, go on, go off. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I, I, look, look, and I'm not talking about going to Jamaica, going here, there. Look, go to the hotel. Yeah. 